Good morning, and welcome to our July 3rd meeting of the Mifflin County Commissioners. Uh, in one moment, I'm going to uh, ask Rob Postal, Commissioner Postal, to deliver the invocation. But I would like everybody to be aware that uh, Kevin Kodish's father-in-law, David Runk, passed away. And uh, so please keep Kevin and his family in your thoughts and particularly in your prayers. Uh, Rob, please deliver the invocation. We bow our heads to eternal God. As we celebrate our nation's independence tomorrow and give thanks for how fortunate we are to be born in the USA, let us not forget that as creator you endowed us with the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You also, however, gave us a free will and the responsibility to protect these rights. We ask for the wisdom and courage that you had given the framers of this great nation 243 years ago. We pray that we have the faith to never doubt your guidance today and always. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Rise to the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Do I have a motion for the approval of the minutes from our last meeting on June 20th? You have a motion. And I will step away from the chair and uh, second that and uh, call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It passed. <laughs> surprise of surprises. Okay. We're ready for This is, the, yes, this is the, or Steve's not just pointed out that uh, I've been a commissioner now for almost four years and this is the first time that I have presided over a meeting. It's a little rusty. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the approval of the bills. All right, we'll start with accounts payable. Accounts payable total $740,293.91. The payroll account is $462,012.04. 911 account is $18,869.51. We have nine checks in the CDBG home account for $65,073.76. There are six checks in the Act 137 account for $8,499.50. Liquid Fuels has one check for $562.50. And there's one electronic transfer from the Liquid Fuels Act 89 account for $63.11. These are all the bills, and I will make a motion to pay the bills. I will second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, Deb Sivitz, Treasurer's Report. Our meeting balance was uh, $2,605,788.72. We had deposits in $1,093,430.12. We had a transfer from 911 uh, for salaries for $400,000. We had uh, to avoid a check for $397.89, uh, and we had interest of $2,270.10. We agree with the reading of the bills by Commissioner Post of leaving us an ending balance of $2,901,590.23. Our liquid fuels account has $364,122.01. Our Act 89 has $286,388. And 83 cents. Our 911 account has one million seven hundred seventy-five thousand one hundred sixty-four dollars and sixty-seven cents. Our LEPC has thirty-six thousand five hundred twenty-nine dollars and thirty-two cents. Our local use fund has two hundred ninety-one thousand seven hundred twelve dollars and fifty-three cents. Our capital reserve has eight million eight hundred and sixteen thousand four hundred eighty-four dollars and thirty-six cents. And our certificate of deposit has three million fifty-four thousand three hundred eighty-nine dollars and twenty-two cents, and it's all subject to audit. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve of the treasurer's report? I make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Meetings and events. Commissioner Postal. 
we had a meeting with the planning department to talk about the administration of the blight remediation program. I had a meeting at Cedar Cog Natural Gas uh, Co-op in Lewisburg. We had a meeting with Granville Township to talk about the blight remediation program. I met with the Emergency Food and Shelter Program Board, also the Mifflin County Housing Authority, Mifflin County Planning Commission. We all opened repository bids uh, this week and finally at a DLI meeting to talk about downtown developments. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, last week I was on vacation, so my report will be very brief. Uh, attended the repository meeting that Rob referred to, and that concludes my report. <laughs> <laughs> okay, public comment. Do we have anybody that would like to uh, offer any public comment today? If so, please step up to the podium. No public comment? Should I volunteer somebody for public comment? <laughs> Deb Civic says no, so I'll adhere to her desires. New business. Okay, item A. Acknowledgement of Children and Youth Assistant Administrator, Nicole uh, Patgaleski, for receiving the Pam Cousins Award. And I think Dana is here to talk about that. Thank you guys for acknowledging Nicole. Um, the Pam Cousins Award is an award that's provided um, at our PCYA conference every June. It's an annual award. Would you, excuse me for interrupting, but the audience probably will not understand the acronym, so could you? Um, the Pennsylvania Children and Youth Administrators Conference, that's held four times a year. Um, and the June um, the June PCYA a Pam Cousins Award is, is um, nominations are taken through 67 counties for individuals that um, our champions of children and um, Mifflin County nominated Nicole and she received the award and represented Mifflin County well. So Very good. Thank you for your hard work. Nicole, would you like to say a few words? No, I just appreciate you recognizing me here um, and I was very surprised to have received it and honored to have received it. Well, I think you should be. Um, I read the background briefing on this that Dana had prepared. And if I understand it correctly, you are the only person who is currently in the workforce that has ever received this award. Most people that have been recognized are people that dedicated their lives to the profession, but were still not employed in the profession. So I think that speaks very highly of what you've done, and I congratulate you. Thank you. Well, I, I think this, this is a statewide award, and it just shows you the, yeah. the um, uh, expertise and dedication, the dedication of our staff. I mean, this is a big deal. This is not just central Pennsylvania. This is statewide. And you could do a little bit of background on Pamela J. Cousins, I think that's right, and uh, her activities in social welfare. So um, this is a big deal. Congratulations. We're proud and it's a beautiful award. It was really fun to surprise her also. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. Item B, request for exoneration of 2019 county portion for per capita taxes. Armagh Township Tax Collector Linda Marks has submitted six. Granville Township Tax Collector Billy Weaver has submitted 76. Decatur Township Tax Collector Cindy McKnight, 72 names. Lewistown Borough Tax Collector Aaron Anawalt, 67. Oliver Township Tax Collector Sherry Miller, 21. And finally, Bratton Township Tax Collector, Connie Peachy, 18. Do I have a motion for the approval of those exonerations? I will so move. I will second it. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Item C, request for exoneration of 2019 County Real Estate Tax Bill and relief the tax collector from collecting this bill. We have three parcels all of which are located in Wayne Township. Parcel uh, number 21,08-0110C,002. Um, it was a mobile home destroyed by fire. The second parcel, um, the value was adjusted for clean and green and will be rebuilt with a March supplemental. And finally, the uh, other parcel, uh, the value was adjusted and will be rebuilt with the March supplemental. Is there a motion for the approval of these? I will approve these three exonerations. 
And I will second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. All right, next uh, we'll bring Dana back up to the podium. Uh, purchase of service agreement for use if needed by children and youth. Okay, so we have quite a few today. So they are all renewals except for two, which I'll identify as I go through. Um, McGregor Behavioral Services is an outpatient behavioral health care. It's located in Gettysburg. Summit Early Learning does our um, Early Head Start. They also do our Healthy Families America, which is one of our evidence-based programs. Um, in the upcoming year, they're also going to be working on um, a neonatal uh, classroom. Um, Shippenville Project Points of Light um, works with those that have sexual offending behaviors, whether it's through outpatient therapy or um, psychological evaluations. Triad Treatment Specialists, um, they do forensic evaluations um, in Dolphin, York, and Lebanon County. Connellsville Counseling and Psychological Services, they also do individual and have a focal point of couples therapy. Um, the Pumpkin Vine Child Visitation Center, we utilize um, in Perry County for kids that we have in foster homes in Perry County so that they don't have to um, be transported. TIU, um, this particular contract is for the communities that care, um, and that is a data collection program that's funded through our needs-based budget that um, gathers data from our youth, um, sixth through eighth grade, and then it's used to identify service gaps in our county. Neurological, neuropsychological services at Clear Vision in Williamsport is also individual therapy. How Bruner Hatch and Guys is in Camp Hill. We use those when we um, have attorney conflicts for some of our TPRs, which is termination of parental rights and um, also assignment of child attorneys. Uh, Jennifer Johnson does a lot of our trauma individual therapy. Huntington County Child Adult Development, they do um, a number of services that focus on, um, let me list everything because it's pretty broad. Um, Adult-based education, family literacy, um, first choice child care, they also do a Head Start program for, we utilize for kids that are housed in foster homes in Huntington County that are Mifflin County folks. Uh, Extended day services, that's one of the new contracts for one of our kiddos that's, how, that's um, in a foster home in near Pittsburgh. It's a daycare and extended school year, so he'll, he'll go before and after school. Project Compass, we'd actually like to put that one on hold, so my apologies, I should have withdrew that for the agenda. Um, McCloskey Counseling Center is um, a drug and alcohol individual therapy. Raystown Devel Developmental Services, they are one of our um, leading uh, service providers that does our reunification program. They do our parenting curriculum. Um, they do our truancy programming. Um, they do our family support conferences um, that are mandated by the state and they are through our needs base. We're down associates, also known as FIX, also does our reunification programming. They also do our family preservation, and they do um, something called FGDM, which is our family group decision-making conferences for families to identify natural supports. Um, and then Vianney Sinek is our interpreter. Here we go. Have you, do you have any other interpreters for other languages besides? So we have a contract with um, a 24-hour company that we can utilize um, various language opportunities, but it's not face-to-face. -face. I understand. Um, but like if we had to go out on call, we could use them and call them to schedule a time to then have them by phone. I was thinking more of how do you handle Chinese or how do you handle Russian or how do you handle other? That would probably be our go-to. Um, we haven't had an influx of, of, okay. of those requests yet, but we, we would have to figure it out. Certainly would find someone that can do that. Okay. Does anybody uh, yeah, that's present have any questions for Dana on this? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve of these vendors for potential use if needed. I'll make a motion. 
I will second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Diana. Yeah. Okay, moving on to letter E. Uh, Lisa Stolnick will go to the podium and will discuss uh, the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency award letter for JAG, which is the Justice Assistance Grant for the period of July 1st, 2019 through June 30th of 2020. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the grant was awarded for the full amount that we requested with no changes to it. It'll help supplement the police department's cost for the new radios that are part of the 911 plan for the community. Um, that's about it. We are starting, well, we started already with the contract with the provider of the radios. Okay, very good. Can you uh, be more specific in terms of the municipalities or the police agencies that will be using these radios? Absolutely. It will be Armagh, Granville, Lewistown, and Regional, Medley County Regional Police Department. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the grant. I'll second that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Lisa. Okay, item F, application for county aid from liquid fuels. We've received one application from a municipality, that is Decatur Township. The request is in the amount of $5,168.03. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I will second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Item G, proposal from GNR Excavating and Demolition Incorporated in Tyrone, Pennsylvania for the demolition project at 144 Klondike Road in Granville Township. Uh, this is in the amount of 13900 and Doug Marks from the Planning Commission will uh, give us some more information on this. Thank, Thank you, Doug. Board of Commissioners. Um, this project was funded in 2017 through the Gramlin Township portion of their funding. Uh, we received two bids on the demolition of, it's a mobile home that is there that's currently in, <coughs> it's condemned and, and is in need of raising and removal. Uh, the site also needs to be cleaned up and taken care of. So we received two bids. Uh, the low bidder was GNR excavating a demolition of Tyrone. Uh, the second bidder was Mike's landscaping. And the two bid amounts were, were $13,900 from GNR and $14,869 from Mike's landscaping and excavating the free bill. Um, with uh, CDBG funding in, 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 that we had in 2017, we had $9,010 uh, for our project costs. And so we asked the commissioners with our new Act 152 funding that we have to supplement uh, this project. And Granville uh, agreed to pay the difference and, and request funding, which uh, they did in a letter that I just gave to you a minute ago uh, for their request for Act 152 funding. Um, so this project will happen relatively quickly. Uh, once we do a, a simple contract for the project and, and the demolition, you know, I'm expecting to take with, you know, a day or two or three, you know, up to a week or something like that, so. All right, thank you, Doug. Um, one, one correction I do have um, in the agenda, uh, it has listed that under uh, the totals, it has $13,900, which $13,900 for the total. And it says 9010 coming from CDBG, which is correct, and 4980 from Act 152, and that should be 4890. So that's a correction for the agenda. I think this is the, the uh, <coughs> Granville Township bought through the repository. Correct, yes. Okay, so Granville Township bought it through our repository list and is taking the initiative to raise the structure that's on it and, and uh, we'll retain the ownership of it I'm not sure for how long this is the second project that the county is participating in with the municipality <coughs> the first project was with Lewistown and now this one with Granville Township we invite 
commissioners invite all the municipalities to submit applications to us for <coughs> condemned properties or properties that they need that have been abandoned to um, raise those blighted properties. So we have funds to do that. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner, for your comments. Uh, does anybody have any further questions of Doug? If not, I'll entertain a motion uh, for approval. So I'll move. I'll second. All in favor signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Doug. Okay. Item H. Change order for the West Wayne Sewer Project, inclu including the uh, uh, quantities used on the project, and it extends the duration uh, and completion date of the project. And I believe, Doug, you're going to discuss this as well. Yes. Uh, this is a project uh, that is in Wayne Township, West Wayne Township, uh, right across the river from uh, Manion. And actually, this was a sewer line replacement and pump station upgrade project to an area called Cedar Crest. And um, what happens is when we bid a project, it's unit, a lot of our projects are unit price based, um, based on the amount of pipe or whatever that we use, uh, footage. That type of thing. So, uh, this is a price adjustment, and uh, the, uh, the contract actually took a little longer than anticipated with going over the winter time and everything. So, they've asked for an extension of time also. Um, the project is now complete, and everything, that every, all parties are satisfied, the final inspections have taken place, and everything. Um, but the quantities that were used were less than anticipated. And uh, we had allotted 149425 in CDBG funding for the project. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the federal contract price originally. We had allotted uh, uh, approximately 137000 for the project. 135000 that's what it was. And, excuse me for my, uh, I added that out of thinking there. But, um, so anyway, we have approximately $135,000 in CDBG funding and West Wayne Township Authority was going to pay the difference of anything that we had. And so their allotment has changed to drop down to $2,055.74. So, um, so we're paying all out of CDBG that we have and then the rest would come from West Wayne. And, uh, so, I have the approval for the change order and then also uh, after the meeting today, which we don't need to really approve, but we'll have the final payment to be signed um, for the best payment. Then. So I'll submit to you later, Steve. Very good. Any questions for Doug? So this, is, this is done, right? This is done, yes. Okay, Cedar Crest area store improvements and pump stations completed. Very good. Yes. Thanks. They're very happy with everything. Um, this is a small authority um, for those of you, like I said, who don't know where Cedar Crest is. If you're ever going up Route 22, uh, near the Thousand Steps, it is the, you know, where the Thousand Steps location is at. It's that community that's up on the hill. And a lot of houses up there. There's uh, a number of houses up in there. And, and uh, so it's a nice little area. So I hope that you get a chance. So. Okay. All right. Do I hear a motion? So moved. I will second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And the motion passes. Okay, item I. Resolution number 10 of 2019 for budget revisions to the federal fiscal year 2016 CDBG program on behalf of the Brown Township Supervisors. Uh, uh, at this point, we'll turn the podium over to Jim. Uh, from the planning commission. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, this is a budget revision to the 2016 CBG uh, program year on behalf of Brown Township Supervisors. It's for the project that, was, that is completed at the Bender Park. It uh, was for a handicapped fishing pier and an accessible route from the parking lot to the pier. The project is done and completed. Uh, there's an overage of uh, $372.06. We're going to make some revision adjustments to increase that project by that amount and decrease their single-family housing rehab uh, line item by that amount. 
which should leave a balance for rehab in the amount of 52,925.79. So it's pretty simple. Any questions for Jim? $372.06. Yeah, we're so that's pretty close. Pardon? That's pretty close. If you start a project and end up $372. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll make a motion to approve. All right, I'll second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Before we go to item J, I would just like to make a small comment and commend the leadership in Brown Township, their township supervisors, for the good work they're doing in that township. There have been a lot of very positive things happening in Brown Township that benefits everybody. And uh, so I want to commend the township supervisors and uh, those affiliated with Brown Township government. Uh, it's wonderful. Okay, moving on. Um, the next item is a request for $10,000 of Act 13 funding for Victory Park, Rec Park, Kish Park Feasibility Study. Uh, for those that don't know, Act 13 is the funding that um, counties receive. It's uh, derived from Marcella Shell um, revenue, and um, the county uh, gets an annual uh, contribution, and part of the funds is to be used for recreation, and part of the funds is to be used for maintenance of roads, bridges, that type of thing. So at this point, we'll turn it over to Bill Gomes, who is the director of the Memphis County Planning uh, Department. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> this is a follow-up to a resolution you uh, actually a few weeks ago when she signed a, agreed to sign a contract with YSM consulting out of, um, of York to design a, a feasibility study between Victory Park, Greg Park, and Kish Park, and also a component that ties in with Stone Arch Bridge, uh, which came to uh, $14,770. Uh, $14, the uh, Part of this, is, as, as, I told, as I mentioned before, at the last time it was broken down by contributions from different groups, including Dairy Township, Lewistown Borough, the Mifflin County Parks and Recreation Council, a RecTech grant, and the Victory Park Association. Um, so with that being said, there was a $10,300 difference, and I mentioned that we would like to use uh, Act 13 money to make that whole. So I would ask that you include that today. Any comments or questions for Bill? Uh, if not, I want to take a motion for approval. I will approve the allocation of $10,300 for this project. I'll second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Bill, when is it going to get started? When do we start this? Uh, probably this fall. We're, we're hoping that the we're hoping the mapping will start maybe in the end of the summer. We're going to, she's going to try to do some mapping early and late before she starts the work, but, it, but most of it's going to start this fall. And then we'll have a final report sometime in the winter or in 2020? It'll spring. take probably three to four months. So I'd, say, I'd say December would be the earliest to see it. Probably the, we'll see. Thank you, Bill. I just want to mention that the firm that uh, uh, Bill has engaged to do this study is one that the Planning Commission has used on multiple occasions. And uh, I'm familiar with them because they worked with the uh, Menor Township Supervisors and the County Commissioners uh, to do the walking trail in Allensville. And as far as I'm concerned, they're first rate, real quality. And um, you get a real bang for your buck uh, with this firm. Okay, moving along. We have Jim back to the podium. This is um, discuss resolution number 11 of the 2019 for budget revisions to the federal fiscal year 2018 CDBG program on behalf of the Dairy Township Supervisors. Yes, this is for a uh, project called uh, Hamilton Terrace. Uh, it's also known as Lewistown Heights Stormwater uh, Replacement and Road Reconstruction Project. It was a multi-year funded project. Um, in 2015, 2016, and 17, 
Um, we received the uh, low bid, which has been approved by the commissioners in Derry Township from Mid-State Paving in the amount of $190,037.50. There's a deficit of uh, $16,946.33. So we're going to do almost an identical thing that we did with Brown. We're going to reduce their housing and rehab program by that amount to fully fund the project in the uh, 2018 fiscal year. So total project uh, with the additional money is $212,737.50. I would like to just add that uh, the municipal authority of the borough of Lewistown um, became aware of this project a little late. Uh, we, in the future, we'll, we'll consult with them on a more regular basis, but they were able to go in there uh, prior to our work and replace and extend water lines um, before we went in and reconstructed the roads. In the event we did our work, they would have to have thrown out our, our work, which would not be a economically prudent. So anyway, they did their work, they're done. So we're gonna get this project underway after we get this revision approved. It's always good news to know that one branch of government cooperates with another branch of government so that public funding is not wasted uh, because of the need uh, to um, do something that should have been done prior to a particular project. Any questions for Jim? If not, I'll entertain any motion. Motion to approve. I'll second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Okay. Item number L. Memorandum of understanding between the Tuscarora Intermediate Unit 11 and the Mifflin County Correctional Facility to provide adult basic education and workforce development services to inmates for the period of July 1, 2019 through June 30, 2020. Mr. Ward, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> this program works with the TIU Tuscarora Intermediate. It uh, has, does job craft, uh, GED, prior training for schooling and its numerous other educational based programs. Excellent. And we have this now. We currently have it now, yeah. And this would be an extension of the program that you have now in the jails. Yes. For males and females. Males and females, yes. Everyone. Everyone who wants to participate. How many do participate? Twenty eight so far this year. Uh, three have completely graduated with their GED or about their GED. We have six that uh, thought what they needed to get their GED. So they had already maybe passed a few tests, didn't pass, and we got them past the Excellent. It's a good program for reentry. I mean, um, it's sad that jail population is what it is, but then um, we do advance the education keep them moving through and hopefully they'll get a step up when they leave. That's the I appreciate your comments, Commissioner, uh, because the pathway to success for people that are incarcerated is education. And we all know the value of education, the importance of education, and by securing quality education there is much less it is much less likely that these people will return to our facility in the future so thank you do I have a motion for approval so move. I'll second that all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. Thank, you. thank you Josh okay item M personnel uh, we have uh, four items under that we're adjusting the start date of part-time planning clerk Tiffany Brock to July 8th, 2019. We are going to rescind the hiring of part-time correction officer, Carly Borman. The appointment of Sarah Foos for Human Services intern, effective August 19th, 2019. And the hiring of law clerk, Charlotte S. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this correctly, Agraski, effective August 5th, 2019. Is there a motion to approve those items? I will move to approve. I will second those. 
Is there anything else to be brought before the board today? Yes, uh, we'd like to acknowledge the services of our video crew here today from the high school. We thank you very, very much for what you're doing and being here. It is summer. You're not in school, but you're here today. So we thank you very much for, uh, for being here and providing this service to our community. As I indicated earlier, this is the first meeting that I have run. Uh, since being a county commissioner, will probably be the last one. <laughs> so uh, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize one person in particular. And this person is an unsung hero in county government. I can get a little emotional about this. A lot of people work very hard and give their all to county government. And many of these people are up front and we see and we hear from these people all the time. But others are sort of in the back row, do their job, do their job well, and make county government work. And so I just want to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to our chief clerk, Kathy Roman, for everything she does. We have no further business. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So I'll second it. Meeting is closed.